Hello, Sudoku friends, and welcome to uh, what I believe is a diabolical puzzle. It was sent to me by a subscriber with a request to solve it. And I have solved it, full disclaimer. I solved it about an hour ago, and I can understand why the subscriber had difficulty solving this puzzle using no notation, because it is quite difficult. As I said, I read it a diabolical puzzle, so it is a little bit about the level of difficulty of the puzzles that I usually present on this channel. So for this recording, I think I will just solve it as I would normally solve a puzzle without using notation until I reach the critical point at the end of the puzzle where I will use pencil marks to better explain what is going on in the puzzle. So please stick around until the end of this solution. The first thing I notice is that the two fours here block here. So a four will have to go in one of these three cells. The next thing I notice is that the eight blocks across here. So an eight will have to go in one of these two cells. So therefore, neither a four nor an eight can be in these two squares. So having said that, I'm looking at the seven blocking over here and the seven blocking over here, the seven blocking down. So this is a seven. One of these must be a seven, of course, now. And these sevens block across here. We got this seven blocking down, so this is a seven. A couple of nines block down here. And another couple of nines block here. So this is a nine along with the knowledge that none of these two squares can be a four or an eight. We also know that because we have an eight in this central box here, that one of these must be a one. And the five blocks up here, so a five will have to go in one of these two squares. And we have a couple of sixes, so a five and a six will be two of the three digits going across here in this box number five. While we are chewing on that, we have a couple of twos blocking down here and we have a two blocking across here. So this is a two. We got a nine coming over here and a nine coming up here. So this square must be a nine. Now one of these two must be a nine. We got these two nines now blocking up here and the nine blocking across here. So this is a nine. And one of these two must be a nine. We notice that the five blocks here, the five blocks here, so one of these squares must be a five. And with the five blocking here, then a five must go in one of these two squares. So we are back to one of these two being a five, but now one of these two must be a five. So we'll be looking for fives in these three squares eventually. We notice that this two and three block here, this two and three block here. So these squares must be a two and a three. Remember how we said that these two squares must be a five, or at least one of them must be a five because the five blocks down here. So if these two squares are a two and a three, then the four remaining empty squares in this block must be a one, nine, four, and a five. A ghost five here and a nine and a one here puts a four in this square. The four blocks over here, so one of these two squares must be a four, as must one of these two squares. We notice the pattern of the two seven here and the two seven here. We need to find a two for one of these two squares. We can't find it yet, but we'll have to keep it in mind. Now, 
Remember how we said that one of these is going to be a five? We also said that a five and a six will go in two of these three squares. From this follows that a five will have to go in one of these two squares. But we also said, because of these two ones here, that a one would have to go in one of these two squares. So the only square we need to fill now, because these are still a two and a three, is this square. And that is, of course, a nine. The nine here and here block up here like so. This nine blocks across, making this a nine. And nine is the first digit that has been completed in this puzzle. Because of this two, a two must go either here or here. We already have this two blocking up here and this two blocking across here. So this is a two. So we got these two is blocking and this two blocking. So this is in fact a two. And now remember how one of these uh, had to be a five? Now we got two twos that will join the fives in pairs. So these are now two five pairs making these a four eight pair. We got an eight bearing down here and we now have a ghost eight coming down here and we have an eight coming across here. So this is an eight. Now remember how we said that one of these must be an eight? That means that this cannot be an eight. This eight blocks here, this eight blocks here and here. Therefore, this is an eight. This eight blocks up here, this eight blocks across, and so does this. Therefore, this is an eight. By the way, we did have a two three pair here, didn't we? We have now taken away this square for a two, that makes this a three. And these are twos and fives. Therefore, this must be an eight. We still need one eight for the grid, and we got this eight blocking across as well as this. Therefore, this is an eight, and that is the last eight in the grid. So we have all the eights and all the nines now. Remember how this is going to be a four because we have a four blocking over here, so this is a four. Also remember that a four had to go in one of these three squares. Since this square is now blocked by the four here, this is a four. I'm looking at the sixes now. This square is blocked from being a six. This square is blocked from being a six. So one of these squares must be a six. And therefore, one of these squares must be a six. So a ghost six here and a ghost six here and this six blocking here makes this six. Now these two twos block here, making this a two. This is now a one four pair, but we have a one in the column, making this a four and this a one. This is now a four six pair, making this a seven. This is a one five, and this is now a one five. We can resolve the two five pair here because we got these twos here and they block like so. So the only square left in column eight where we can place a two is here. And that makes this a five. Uh, these two fives now block, so this is of course a five. And now one of these must be a five now. This four blocks across, this four blocks down, so this is a four. And that makes this square a four. And in return this square, and therefore this is a six. 
We still need to find a one, two, and a three for these squares here. There's a two coming down here. So this is a two. This is a one or a three. Or a one and a three. This is also a one and a three. These are still a one and a five. So we do need a one and a five for these two squares. That's clear. This is also a one and a five candidate. We can place a seven here because these two sevens block up here. And this seven blocks across here. So this is a seven. A one, three and a five now here. The only thing we can say is that a five must go here or here and the three must go up here somewhere. And the one must go one here or here. And here is where it gets interesting and where I will try to continue without using pencil marks, but I will explain exactly what it is that I'm doing. Let's first examine these two corner cells. They have to be a one and a five, agree? Now, focusing on the one, let's examine these two squares. They have to be a one, one of them. So we have an X-wing. And an X-wing here means that no square in between these corners can be a one. So a one cannot go here and a one cannot go, well, there, there is no free space here anyway. But what's more important in this case is that across this row, there can also be no more ones because if this square is a one, it follows that this cannot be a one. And this cannot be a one, therefore this must be a one. So there cannot be no more ones in this row. Now look at these two squares here. We already know that they have to be a one and a three. But as I've just explained, this square cannot be a one. It must be a three. And that makes this a one. That was an X-wing. And that now puts a three in this square. Now we have a three here or here. here and here, and here, here, or here. So now the explanation is much more simple. Remember how we had this X-wing of ones here, and therefore we could eliminate the one that was here and make it a three, making this a one. But look here, there's also a one in this square here. So we have to take away this one as a candidate from this square. And here is where the rubber hits the tarmac. Here is an XY wing for you. That is usually very difficult to spot without using pencil marks. And the XY wing has what we call a pivot cell here. Because from here, we have two wings. We have one wing that goes down here and one wing that goes over here. Here is how it works. You can see that these three squares, they share a one, three, and a five. They are at an angle. If they were all in the same column or row or in the same box, it would be much more simple. We have to ask ourselves, with this cell being the pivot cell, what if this is a five? It can only be a one or a five, right? So let's just play with the idea that this is a five. If this is a five, then this cannot be a five. That's clear. It must be a three. If this is a three, then this square cannot be a three. It must be a six. Can we agree on that? Now, let's assume this is not a five, but it's a one. If this is a one, then this is a three. And again, this must be a six. So whichever value this cell ends up having, this must be a six. So 
we can now safely enter a six here. And now look what happens. This is a six. This is a six. And this is a six. Now we got all the sixes just because we had one little x, y wing. This is now a one. And so is this, and this is a five. And now everything kind of solves itself. So I'm not going through the motions of explaining what I'm doing here. I'm just getting rid of all the candidates and filling the big numbers in like so. So to the subscriber who was kind enough to send me this example, I have to say that if you try to solve this notation free, I can understand why you struggled because I struggled. And difficulties like these are best solved using pencil marks in my experience. You have to have a much larger brain than I have before you can solve these puzzles without some sort of help. But I hope that this instruction was to the benefit of uh, some of you and that you will come back for more soon. Thank you for watching and bye for now.